Hey, good morning, dear brethren. Um, by the Most High's grace and mercy, um, we're bringing forth his word by his spirit. And by his word, as always, this is the 1769 King James Version Bible, which is the same as the 1611 King James Version Bible, because both are translated from the original Hebrew and Greek tongues into the English tongue. The 1769 is the modern English. The old English is the 1611. So now we're going to get into a topic that's very important, that's echoed by virtually anyone in Israel or that knows that we're Israel or people in the world, in life, um, it's the word, the truth. And many in Israel don't realize how much leaven they have in them as they start learning scriptures at an Israelite group or at an Israelite church or from Christianity, hearing some things and mixing Islam, Christianity. They have all these different perceptions, thoughts, traditions, and they kind of come up with their own connection or mixture to make up truth. So let's get um let's get Romans three and four real quick because one of the things that we find scripturally is that with the heavenly father, his word is the truth. John chapter 17, verse 17. We won't have a chance to get all these scriptures, but at least we'll go over a few and quote them. So make sure in your own time you diligently look up all these precepts. So you're adding to your learning about what the Heavenly Father defines as truth. Um, you also have the biblical Jesus Christ, who is prophesied to be hated, despised, rejected. Psalm 69, 4, Isaiah chapter 53, um, Isaiah 66, 5. You can go through all this, virtually all the prophecies about the Messiah, um, aside from what he would say, do, um, speak in parables, be sacrificed the same way a lamb is sacrificed without spot and blameless and without blemish. He would be that same way in many other prophecies, scriptures he would fulfill. But many people don't acknowledge, even in Israel, with a Bible, that according to Isaiah 42, verse 3 and verse 4, that the biblical Jesus Christ, the biblical Messiah prophesied, the Redeemer of Israel, that he would be true, that he would be the law. He would be the living word of the Heavenly Father, embodying what the Most High's perfection and holiness is, sounds like, looks like. Not just that he's a black man, even though obviously that's a small aspect of truth, that in a wicked world like this, even that is among the deceptions and lies that exist. But we have to grow beyond just physical things. We have to understand what the Messiah is and also how we start to build ourselves up in truth, how we start to view ourselves more truthfully and more objectively rather than if I'm an argumentative person, I need to change that. Because if I'm a person living with strife, I'll never be able to love my neighbor. I'll be too sensitive. I'll be too violent. I'll be too aggressive. I'll be too rude. I'll be too impatient to apply any of the commandments to deal with my neighbor righteously. So now, as we continue, we see that the Heavenly Father, he shows us throughout the word what living righteously and what walking in truth, what worshiping him in spirit and truth, according to the commandments in John 4, verse 23 and verse 24, that are precepts to Isaiah 10, verse 20, all down through verse 22 that the righteous remnant will abide on the, in the Most High, will abide in his word and truth, will abide in him in truth. So Romans 3, verse 4, just to get a couple of precepts to really emphasize this important point. So this is Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Let's start from verse 3. It says, for what if some did not believe? So what if some don't believe in the biblical Jesus Christ? What if some don't believe in the word of the Heavenly Father, which is, the Word made flesh, the biblical Jesus Christ, and the Bible. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Shall their unbelief make the faith or the truth of God or his spirit of truth confirmed by his word? Will they make that faith false? Will they will their atheism, will their Afrocentricity, 
well, there lies, or no, Horus is Christ. The, the Bible is, is, is plagiarizing African um, mysticism and lies. That it's not the other way around like it is. It's the Bible um, trying to copy Africans. So people have their excuses or their own feelings. Shall that then undo the word of the Heavenly Father and the truth, which is faith? There's no blind faith when we serve the Heavenly Father. That's reserved for religion and the lies you have to ignore and the hypocrisies to follow it. But now when we're dealing with the Most High's faith, so someone not believing make the faith void, make it untrue? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid meaning in no way impossible it will never make the most high's word of truth and faith false god forbid yeah let god be true but every man a liar so the first aspect of dealing with the heavenly father in spirit and truth is that we're not focused on men in israel men that know that we're israel speaking about the heavenly father speaking about the messiah whether it's through dialects of Hebrew or English or in, in physical places of worship, we're not focused on that because we can't have God be true if we have men in God be true. Let me be more clear. When a man is true, his words and his actions are going to be in agreement with the word of the Heavenly Father. So if that man says something, that's different than following the traditions of men that you're going to find in every church, every group. There's a difference to following the Heavenly Father's word and following men that speak about the Heavenly Father's word. So let's be clear. Let me repeat that. There's a difference in truth if you follow people that talk about the Heavenly Father, that know that we're Israelites or talk about a higher power or say aspects of truth, than following the Bible only. Because what happens is most people, they continually make man that talk about God be true instead of the word of the Heavenly Father only being true and then learning it so that they can discern who that talks about God is true or not, starting with themselves. By making sure their words and their thoughts and their actions reflect and follow the Bible only instead of the Bible and man or the Bible and brothers that know that they're Israelites. So how we follow God and let God be true is we let the Israelites that God confirmed to be righteous in the Bible, we let them be the standard and the example through the Bible, not brothers that seem righteous to us or sound righteous to us or quote more scriptures than we know in our youth and ignorance. So then that by default, then they, they gotta be true. They know the Bible. If I knew what they know, I wish I could have, no. We have to cut how we feel and let God be true and every man a liar. So if it's not coming out the Bible, every single thing, not some things, not the Passovers in the Bible, then you have all these different traditions related to your Passover that have nothing to do with the scriptures. That you're following the Passover, but you're not keeping it um, with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth as commanded in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 and verse 8. Because we're in the Passover time. You have a lot of brethren that are following the Passover either right now. They followed it last week when it actually fell and occurred. But regardless, make sure that for you to be able to continue to refine your understanding and grow in the Heavenly Father and abide in His Word more and more, that you're learning the Bible. You don't think you already know. You don't feel safe or you don't feel righteous because you're following men. Because again, let's read this commandment again. This is a commandment, fam. This isn't a suggestion. It says, yeah, let God be true. That's not a suggestion. That's not optional. That's not a, a, a good saying. It's not something clever. Let God be true is an actual commandment. And we let God be true by only going by his word, speaking his word only, not quoting what men say that sounds intelligent or is not the word. Because you have a lot of our brethren, for example, a lot of brothers in IUIC, they quote um, their leader as if he's the Bible. So that's an example of where 
brothers and sisters can be deceived without even realizing it because if someone speaks about the heavenly father they quote scriptures from time to time many still being carnally minded or being babes or not realizing how satan and deception work they can be carried and led to Id idolize and follow men that talk about the heavenly father and being led away from the heavenly father instead of the word only and we'll get that next we'll get that precept next so you can understand this area where many stumble at or they've been in israel 10 20 years or knowing that we're israelites or trying to follow god through christianity or other religions also and don't realize that they're still captive in satan because some of these scriptures they're not getting in the detail or having their conscience washed by the pure water of the word the true biblical jesus christ the actual truth so from here let's continue so it says but let yeah let god be true but every man a liar as it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy saying. So the only way we're justified in our sayings is not saying that Christ is going to come in a particular year when the Bible contradicts that in Matthew 13 and says, no man knoweth, not the, not the son of man himself. The Messiah that's been prophesied to be the one that's going to initiate judgment day with millions upon millions of angels. He doesn't know the exact moment and day that he's going to come. But you, you're you going to constantly hear, you've already heard, and you're going to continue to hear, men, whether they know what we're Israelites or not, or they talk about God, they're going to be telling you what time or when day or the year 2026, the year 2025. They're going to keep the year 2030, the year 2050, or the year 2021. They're going to keep telling you over and over again, the year 2012, the year 2000. They're going to keep telling you these things. And if you don't have understanding, you're going to be deceived by these false prophets. They're going to tell you dreams. Maybe they told you someone would get an accident. They did. And you're going to mix that by not having understanding. You're going to mix how Satan has power and works. You're not going to see Satan. You're going to say, he was the one that said that person was an accident. Now he's saying that Christ is coming this year. Or do we got to do this? Or we got to pay money. We got to do this. And you're going to continually be deceived. You're going to be always serving Satan and lacking truth but not realizing the darkness that you're following because you continue to be blind thinking you know. The way you avoid that is as we're reading, the commandment, let God be true, but every man a liar, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings. So you don't have to backpedal. You don't have to be defensive when someone tells you that you're wrong. You're going to have the humility to be able to admit that you're wrong and ahead of that, you're going to be diligently and humbly dealing with the scriptures. So in meekness, you're going to be able to identify on your own when you're wrong. Or pause if you're in a conversation or even something that others might cons cons consider a heated or emotional debate or whatever name you want to call it. You're going to be able to have self-control because you're abiding in the Lord's spirit and putting on these commandments day by day. And you're going to turn away from the ways that you are or the ways that men and women around you are. And let God be true and submit to the word by obeying it. So now it says that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. So when we're judged of men, because if we submit to the word, we're going to overcome. We're going to stand before the Son of Man on Judgment Day. We're going to be working out our own salvation with fear and trembling, not pride and um, aggress like aggression and bickering and strife. We're going to be dealing in peace. We're going to be looking to help a brother that you might never see again. You're not going to be arguing that he doesn't know that Cornelius is, is an Edomite. You're not going to be debating in like doctrines like that. You're going to be doing something fruitful. You're going to be helping the brother. You're going to be showing him that there are brothers that know that we're Israelites but actually have love for our people. They're not going to stumble at a scripture to prove why they don't love their people. When the second greatest commandment, part of truth is loving thy neighbors thyself. You have no truth if you don't love your neighbor. And if you don't love your neighbor, you cannot love the most high who you haven't seen and who you must love your neighbor to prove that you're keeping his commandments, which you must keep to love him. Read 1 John 4 and 20. Read Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6. Start to learn this word, fam, so you can actually abide in truth. Not your own truth. Not the truth being that you learned you were an Israelite or um, that you're in a physical place of worship. 
among other brethren that may know that we're Israelites. So now, um, from here, let's go to Jeremiah 17, because this is another important aspect of the truth, because a lot of brethren, they have what they focus on. For example, many of our people focus on the fact that we're Hebrews, that during the Tower of Babel, all nations except for us retain the tongue of the heavens, retain the tongue of the Heavenly Father and His Word, the biblical Jesus Christ, the tongue the angels use with the Most High and with the biblical Jesus Christ. So many start to put what they value as truth or what men instill in them and the traditions of those men in the past in ancient Israelite groups or today. So this isn't against our people as a people. It's against the lies and the deceits that we follow blindly. That unless we come in truth as commanded, we're going to remain deceived. Let's get this. Because one of the main deceptions is Israel is about this Hebrew that comes from men, Hebrew dialects, words of men. Every language on the earth, you can even Yiddish, you can go to dictionaries, you can go to a Yiddish English dictionary or whatever, if they claim it's Hebrew, Portuguese English, French English, Dutch English, Dutch Spanish, you can, you can go within the languages that exist today and find the definitions of those languages. You could find countries where those, those languages are spoken. But we're going to read a prophecy that because we sinned against the Heavenly Father, our sin was so wicked, he compared it to a pen of diamond, uh, a pen of iron with a diamond tip. That our sin was so wicked and engraved in us and, and so marked and marked that he defined it at that level. So as a result of us being sinful constantly and having wicked hearts and not wanting to be born again like we're commanded, not following the, the commandments that are required, but following commandments of men that talk about the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father gave this punishment to us that we're suffering from as we speak, including those of us that are learning we're Israelites. That's an aspect of the heritage that we were discontinued from. So let's get it. This is Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So the Heavenly Father, for our sins that we read in Jeremiah 17 from the first verse on down, the punishment, the corresponding righteous punishment from our Heavenly Father was everything that we're suffering today, the oppression, the racism, the poverty, our men and our women against one another, uh, the men leaving the children, and then justifying that by the wicked woman that they chose as if they don't have any accountability or they're no longer responsible, you have to choose a woman wiser. That's why marriage is defined as a weighty matter. As an aspect of truth, when we read in Ecclesiasticus chapter 7, verse 24 and 25, we're commanded to marry our daughters. So with the fathers being out of the picture, we have the whoredom and the chaos and our women presenting themselves as whorish women and prostitutes, even if they don't sell their bodies for money. You put a regular teenage woman, a girl, and you put a working woman, a woman that earns by selling her body or presenting her nudity to different men or her sexual or being sexual with different men for money, you physically can't tell who's the whore and who's not. And our people are so far from truth that when you tell them truth or use a word like whore, they're so sensitive and full of rage and traumatized from the choices of sin that they're making, you can't even have dialogue or a conversation. So Satan has our people so captive that even the word of the Lord that will feed them, many of them feel they already follow the Lord, have a guilty conscience and are trying to fight, and then any words that would help them they reject those words either with aggression, violence, pain, mixed with rage, displaced anger. So that's why we have to fix ourselves and start to learn not only that we're Israelites, but realize that we're perfectly destroyed in every single aspect of our life. That's why we have to start a whole new life. We can't omit that when it comes to truth because many will, you know, we're Israelites. We're the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. And an exceeding great army stood forth. They're ready to quote Ezekiel 37. 
that exceeding great army isn't going to be from doing push-ups or mixed martial arts or because you're joining an Israelite group and wearing the same garments and uniforms. That's going to be who the Heavenly Father is going to quicken when you read in Zechariah chapter 12, verse 8. You're not, you're, we're not going to do something like the scriptures say in 1 Samuel 2 and 9. Let me get that. Let's hold this because the Most High discontinued us from our heritage, our strength and everything. And many want to sort of bypass those scriptures because they're learning with Israelites. So they, you know, use Hebrew dialects. They feel that they've overcome those curses incorrectly. That's why the scriptures say, like, study to be quiet, like be still upon your beds like in Psalms 4 and 4. We have to really let this word sink into our ears. And that comes with our obedience. That comes with understanding only comes with obedience, not quoting scriptures, not faithfully being in where teaching occurs. Not thinking because you're there that now that has to be a righteous place because you're tired of false prophets or you're tired of the lies in Christianity or Catholicism or the Baptist church or wherever else you've been. We don't determine the terms. We have to, by the scriptures, identify the wolves starting with ourselves to make sure that we're purging all the wickedness that will make us evil and hypocrites. So let's go to 1 Samuel 2 and 9 just to touch on a point because... We're not going to be able to touch on every point, but these are some just important aspects of truth scripturally that many of our people, okay, so we're a destroyed people. We don't even have weapons. We don't have a standing army. Wherever we are, we're the only people that aren't allowed to protect and govern ourselves. Okay, and you can, you can extend that. You know, you have our people scattered in Mexico, for example. Mexicans, the ones that rule Mexico, are the so-called um, Spanish, the Spaniards. Edomites that call themselves Spaniards. Then you have um, so-called Arabs. You have other people that have power in Mexico as well, just to, just to bring a random example. And our people, while debating about if they're the tribe of Iskar or whatever, they're missing the whole point that wherever we are, whether we have kinky hair or straight hair, if we're actual Israelites, if our forefathers were come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and suffered the affliction and the curses in the past and today, that we are undoubtedly Israelites, not just because we're brown, not just because we have kinky hair. But aside from that, we have to worship the Heavenly Father. So you have many that have this military, um, army, marine type of mindset that's transferred from the so-called white man's military to the Israelite groups that they're in, that many may have a military background or have that um, militant type of mind, not realizing that there's no physical strength, there's no amount of weapons, there's no army that we can create and say it's the Heavenly Father's because that's not how the Heavenly Father's creating our army. He's creating obedient servants, one of a city, two of a family. He's not creating groups. He's not creating churches. He's not creating thousands that are going to be marching about in a militant, we don't fear the white man way. The Heavenly Father is going to redeem us from him that's mightier than us. Not a bunch of us marching, not a bunch of us quoting Ezekiel 37 and 10 incorrectly and without understanding. Let's prove it. 1 Samuel 2, this is an aspect of truth. That's why we're going over it. So keep up. So this is 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse um, 9. Okay, let's get it. So it says, um, he will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness. So while the Heavenly Father is protecting us, that keep his commandments, that worship him in spirit and truth, not in Israelite groups, not in Christian churches, not in their own way, sampling a bunch of different beliefs, he will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. So that wicked isn't limited to the so-called white man. Yes, those that are in power, the so-called white man, Edom, Yes, they're, they have a specified exact time to rule. And the second, the moment that that time is, is elapsed or occurs, that's when judgment day comes and that's when their reign is over. They won't rule a second longer. Okay, this wicked world won't abide a second longer. And that's not going to be because, again, the Most High is orchestrating this. Not us talking about the Most High or quoting Ezekiel 37 and 10. Let's see why. 
it says, for by strength shall no man prevail. So whether we know military tactics, whether we're experts at self-defense or in mixed martial arts or can defend ourselves, that's a good skill to have in a dangerous world, but not more important than having the Heavenly Father protect you. And if you're wise, you're going to know how to defend yourself while more important than anything, making sure that you're learning to worship the Father and Spirit and truth and renewing the spirit of your mind as we're commanded. And those are the commandments that many that talk about God never do and never start to renew their mind. So now let's continue, fam. So you can continue reading this whole first Samuel, the second chapter, starting from the first verse is a must read and a must apply. And to further our understanding and your understanding, if this is the first time you're learning about it or you read it and you need to continue reading it until it stays in your mind and until you apply it. So, but the key is, is that we have to get out of that mind of that we're going to do something. We're tired. We're fed up. So now we're going to enact a change. We're going to be militant. We're going to stand up to the so-called white man. You have to stand up every day. And that's not limited to the so-called white man. In truth, you're going to have to stand up and establish order in your house as a wise man dwelling with your wife according to knowledge, not with your strength, not with your fists, not because you're a masculine man, not because you don't fear the white man is now your house going to be in order. So as we start to learn truth, we start to renew the way that we think and we discern time and judgment. We know there's a time for peace and also a time for war. Not every moment you're a warrior or you're a brave, aggressive, bullying warrior when you're with someone that you perceive is weaker than you. Or it's 15 to 1, you speaking about Israelite group doctrine, and you have an old lady that's resistant or has spirits. That's not the kingdom of heaven. That's not the disciples. They were the persecuted. They didn't do the persecuting. So now we have to make sure that we're falling in line with scriptures rather than looking to isolate scriptures to fit into whatever we're doing or how we're thinking, teaching, and living. Let me repeat that. To serve the Heavenly Father in spirit and truth, the main thing that we must do is make sure that we're being renewed in the way that we think and in the ways that we speak, live, and abide. Not looking for scriptures. If you're an aggressive person, doesn't know how to rule their spirit, trying to find a scripture that speaks about um, surely oppression make it the wise man mad. Because you miss the scripture in the same book of Ecclesiastes. That was Ecclesiastes 7 and 7. You miss where the Heavenly Father said anger rests in the bosom of fools a couple of verses later so you can have a well-rounded actual understanding of truth. Not just being aggressive and deciding that that's not a bad thing. That's actually wise if you're in a world that makes you angry where your people are suffering and we suffer racism, but you then are going to miss the part that is deserved. And that attitude and anger that you've had is, that's not repented of, even though the Heavenly Father is merciful, you're still going to constantly encounter problems. You're going to choose the wrong woman. You're going to lead with your own standard. You're going to let yourself be true instead of letting your own self be a liar to admit that you have to change and conform to the scriptures. All right, so now let's go back to Jeremiah 17. So now let's start again from the top. So it says, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So for our great sins, for millennia, for thousands of years, for nonstop since Adam, we continually sinned as individuals and as a people. The Heavenly Father, even the few righteous among us, the Heavenly Father punished also as he punished our people. And one of the punishments was that we would discontinue, not only from knowing we're Israelites, not limiting that discontinuing from your heritage means that you don't know that we're the Jews and Israelites. That's a small aspect of it. It's that the Heavenly Father, he turned his back on us. So where we would never be able to be defeated in war, because strength comes from heaven, so it would be the Heavenly Father strengthening us like David, strengthening us like Samson, strengthening us like the Maccabees. When you read in the Maccabees, in 1 Maccabees 3 and 19, it says that strength comes from heaven. That's why Judas Maccabees, he had rakes and, you know, hammers and makeshift, you know, like blacksmith tools. He, he, Israel was, was, a, was a people that was poor and destroyed. 
can have standing armies and weapons and catapults that could fling 500 pound boulders that is covered with tar and fire and knock down walls that are made of cement and fortified. They, we didn't have that type of technology or weapons back then, but because we had the Lord, we prevailed. So it's time for us to really get into these scriptures in the way the Heavenly Father's Spirit will open up the scriptures to us. That's why we have to worship him in spirit and truth. And his word is spirit. So we can't have man in any part coming with their breakdown for this. And we're going to see man's breakdown for this same Jeremiah 17 and 4. So many limit that we discontinue from our heritage to our land, losing our land and losing our Hebrew which by extension is, you know, that we don't know where the Jews or Israelites. And we lost the Heavenly Father. That's why he dwelt with his people. Wherever we are, we don't need a temple. We don't need a, a holy of holies. We don't need um, the Ark of the Covenant. We don't need those physical things that existed at one time to access the Heavenly Father's power, the Urim and the Thummim that David used to determine exactly what the Most High's counsel would be, even as a righteous man. Now the Most High, and as always, He's always dealt with us by our spirit, by our minds. But our people try to use their minds, which is opposite to the Most High's word in mind. So we have to stop and start over again. And when we were discontinued from our heritage, that's clear that we have to start all over again. We have to start from scratch as newborn babes, as we're commanded to renew the spirit of our mind, to be born again. And those are the main commandments that we have to follow and the ones that our people ignore or don't understand. Or read Deuteronomy 10 and 16, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and be no more stiff-necked. They, they, that might not even register. They may have their own perception of that, not realizing that that's, those are the type of commandments that we have to start a whole new life. We have to clear the wickedness out of our mind, which is the majority of the, our whole mind, and start a new life. So... We discontinue from our heritage. It says, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. And ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So in many instances, whether it was Assyrian captivity, um, you know, modern Babylon, America, uh, we, we've we constantly been led to different, Babylon, we've been led to different countries that we didn't know. But now this prophecy is at the highest level because now it's really fulfilled because even then we still knew that we were Israelites, even in ancient Egypt. We knew that we were Israelites. But now that this particular prophecy is being fulfilled and very specific, don't limit it to just us not knowing our true language Hebrew. People are Israelites, oh, we don't know the Hebrew. Because when we do that, when we go by men's words that make sense to us carnally, we're not dealing in the Bible's truth if the scriptures don't say that. And by you using dialects of Hebrew of men, when we were discontinued from our heritage, you come in, oh, we're discontinued our heritage, so if we learn the Bible, then we can get back our heritage by learning Hebrew. We're Hebrew Israelites, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Come on, come on, come on. Slow down, champ. Because by you doing that, this is exactly what you're going to fulfill unknowingly or proudly or blindly. Verse 5, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in men, because now that we discontinue from our heritage, our people are listening to men talking about Ahia, Yahuwah, and men more than listening to the Most High only. Let's continue. And maketh flesh his arm. So the arm of the Lord is the biblical Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. When we read in, um, in Isaiah 8, so the arm of the Lord is the biblical Jesus Christ. That's who he brings forth his spirit through. That's who he brings forth his strength by, his judgment by. That's why Judgment Day Christ is coming as his arm to establish eternal righteousness and judgment and remove this wicked earth from the way that it is as it is written. And start a whole new earth and a whole new even sky, whole new heavens, a whole new sky. Even the pollution is going to be done away. with. But we can't talk about those things and not do the righteousness or identify the ways that we've been deceived that are common and at times people still remain ignorant of the ways that we can be deceived. We're Israelites, so there's no way us talking about Hebrew, you know, is way, that's no, how can deception be in that? We're Hebrew Israelites. We debate and argue about the Most High's name and every Israelite group has a different name and reference to the Most High in their dialect of Hebrew. How is that wrong? That's 
the wrong that we've always done. Use the Heavenly Father to be divided amongst each other. Use our own personal beliefs, quoting the scriptures or not, to be mortal enemies. Instead of using the Bible, which teaches us wisdom, self-control, love, peace, to be able to reconcile or fix a problem. To be able to communicate, even if you feel you were wrong or didn't want to, because you have that much love for your people or your family member or those that you have a problem with that you're commanded to love. And yes, sometimes you can forgive someone, but you might have to keep them over there. They might have molested you, which is very common and rampant among our people, unfortunately. As prey to the nations and the so-called white men, they then prey upon the weakest among their households and families instead of protecting them. Because as a completely destroyed people, that's not off the table in terms of sins that people perpetuate or do. And so busy talking about everything else, the main sins and the main healing that we need, they're too busy learning dialects of Hebrew of men and trusting in man instead of trusting in the Lord and getting healed. Christ said, learn of me because I am meek and lowly in heart and then that he would bring us peace. He would show us how to be, not being proud, even if we're learning understanding or learning that we're Israelites and can prove it. That's why we have to learn truth according to the Messiah not the day that you learned that we're Israelites or that the Bible was true. Those are small aspects of truth. But the overall truth is the Bible itself, which is the biblical Jesus Christ. And abiding in it, making God be true by his word only in every man a liar. You're not going to trust a man in Israel with a Bible over the Bible. And any man in Israel that's true is only going to coincide with the Bible, which is not the case. And if you don't have true understanding or you trust in man, you'll never see that fall that you will always do or that stumbling that you will do by trusting in man. That's why let's read this again. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So we have to make sure that the danger is 100% of the time, if you trust in man, whether you realize it or not, your mind, your heart, is going to go far from the heavenly father. That's why he said, with their lips they honor me, but their heart is far from me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. We get that in Mark 7, verse 6, down to verse 9. We get that, um, which is quoting Isaiah in Isaiah 29 and 13. So many talk about truth, but they don't deal with the aspects of truth that make a man live or die, that make a man a wise man or a fool, that make a man quote thousands of scriptures but has no faith, has no truth in him. And that's the level of truth we have to acquire through the Lord or we're going to suffer. We're going to be talking about man's righteousness. You can't say the word Lord rather than realizing that through the Lord we're saved in whatever language that we speak because he who knows all things knew we wouldn't have the true Hebrew and that there would be false prophets coming with their own dialects of Hebrew. Because he didn't give that to us when we read in Zechariah chapter, um, sorry, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 8 and verse 9. That the Most High will give us the Hebrew, which is not today. When the nations are subdued, when the kingdom of heaven is being established in the earth, for real, when Christ comes in judgment day, that's when we can start to look for Hebrew and those things. And we have much more important things. Who cares if you know Hebrew? If you don't please the Lord, you'll be destroyed. But the same so-called white man or other sinners. So now um, we'll have to pause here, but um, let's let's just get real quick. John 17, 17, because a lot we again, brothers, just to reinstill the point, you can't have truth without the Bible. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. So the Bible is the only truth, not an Israelite group, not your feelings or how the Lord opens things to you. If it's not an agreement to the Bible and it's not the Lord's Spirit and something hasn't been opened to you, the Bible verifies it. Isaiah 8 and 20, John 17, 17. Holy hugs, all honor, praises, and glory to our almighty Heavenly Father through his word and our life, the biblical Jesus Christ. Peace, brethren.